Hey everybody, Bob Olson here with Afterlife TV. You can find us at afterlifetv.com. It's where we search for evidence of life after death and ask the meaningful questions around that subject. Today's subject is we're going to talk about the tools that everyday people, you and I, can use to communicate with our loved ones in spirit. Uh, we're not talking about ABCs here. We're talking about tools that we can actually use to communicate with our loved ones. And uh, our guest today to help us with this is... Who else but James Van Prague. Hey, James, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, well, you know, I thought, who better to talk to us about this particular subject than someone who's been working as a medium for over 30 years, right? Yeah, about 30-something. After 30, it's something. So 30-something oh years, yeah. Goodness, I, uh, <laughs> I can remember very early in my journey. Uh, I should have had the book here with me, but I... Um, I had it in past interviews that we've done together is uh, Talking to Heaven. I read Talking to Heaven in the late 90s, and it's still one of my favorite books to this day. There's something about it. Uh, I think everybody should read that. Uh, then Ted Danson played you in the movie about your story under the same name, right? Talking to Heaven right. was the... Yes, yeah. already which, played me. I, which I loved. Strange casting, but yeah, it worked. Well, that was, that was a compliment to him, actually. Yeah, And thanks. I uh, I think... And, and, and then your work has just branched off from there. Uh, to this day, uh, I don't know, you know, people are enthralled, they're educated, they're comforted by your work. And, uh, and I saw this just Saturday. Uh, I was so honored to be able to introduce you at an event that you did, what we call a medium demonstration in New Hampshire, Manchester, New Hampshire. Uh, had a lot of fun. What a, it was fun. They Thank were you. a rowdy group, I will say. They were. Yeah, and my a first, lovely. First whistler. <laughs> and my first nose blower. That was really interesting. Nose blower. That's right. There was a nose blower in the audience in the middle of a reading. <laughs> and Karen the whistler. <laughs> that's, that's, oh, yeah, the, the whistler. We had them all. We had, we had all sorts there. And, uh, and it made it a lot of fun, and I, I know I know I enjoyed it a lot. My Melissa was there, and I know so many people around me were enjoying it. Some great readings. Uh, one I had to s sort of turn away from because I was about to fall into cry. tears. Yes. Um, it's cry, Bob. Is it okay to cry? You well, know? you know, I just <laughs> I cry enough as it is. <laughs> I don't need to be encouraged to do it anymore. But anyway, so today we're going to talk about tools. If we're not mediums, tools that we can use uh, to communicate with our loved ones in spirit. I, I want to start with just talking about this. Early in my investigation of the afterlife, so this is probably late 90s, um, I, I ended up going to a tarot reader. Actually, I went to three tarot readers. The very, what started me thinking about this was, yes, I had three tarot readings in a row. They were all similar. Um, now, that, those were not about spirit communication, because that's before I met my first medium. But it amazed me that I had three tarot readings with three different people, and they were all similar. Um, when you have s these sort of things, when we, we're going to talk about these tools, but when we have these tools, you know, let's just use that, even though that was a psychic reading. How does that happen? Who's influencing the cards as they're... As they're being put down on the table, is there is there some influence? So, so, so there's a difference in between the two. So there's a psychic and there's a mediumship again. So yeah. psychic, again, is tuning into energy. So whatever that tarot card is being turned over, um, that, that psychic is able to tune into the energy of the card and that person. And really, I think it comes to the psychic knowingness that, that that psychic knows exactly what that means for the for that person that they're reading, and they're able to tune in psychically what that card, how to interpret that card properly, for the customer, for the yeah. person that's reading. Different with each person, different with each card. I do tarot card readings with regular decks of cards. Okay? Oh. So I use a regular deck of cards and I can always just tune in it's tuning to the knowingness. And I'll get a two of clubs and I'll get a three of hearts or I'll get a king of spades. Am I gonna look at the value of that card? Not necessarily. For me, I mean, for me it's different for each person. Yeah. I know when other media one of the psychics do it, they will interpret the, what's on that card. For me, it's almost like opening up a book and I'll see a different page and a flash 
of what that energy is like for the person I'm reading on a psychic level. Oh, I feel that. Oh, I see a marriage over here. Oh, I see the trouble with, with um, a child in your life right now. And it's all in the very psychic. So I don't think we're being influenced by spirit. I don't think so on a psychic level. Yeah. Now, there are other tools that we use for mediumship, which you can use for mediumship. Um, number one, there's a one with uh, inspiration. So inspiration means in spirit. So there are mediums that will go into a light trance, if you will, a light trance. And most creative people, without even knowing it, go into a light trance and, and receive communication via music, whether it's design, painting, um, and inspirational writing. So many times I have people go to an, a light trance state and their guides will come through and write prayers or poems or letters to them. So that's another way. Automatic writing is a, a way of doing it, if, if tools for you to use for the spirit world, to contact the spirit world. Yeah. Um, another, way you, you know, another way you can do it as well is um, you have to remember that the, the spirit world is a greater intelligence. It's, it's really they who have the great intelligence. So if you have a desire to contact the spirit world, in some ways you can do it any way you want. But there's the tools, for instance, let's say psychometry, you hold an object of somebody. The first thing you'll do is tune in on a psychic level, on the knowingness level. That gets people in. That gets people into that center of knowingness. The trust level is opened up. They feel that they can do this. They have the ability. The fear is taken away. The limitations are taken away. And then I bring them up to the next step of the mediumship. So they don't necessarily need then to tune in holding an object. They can really use the mind. They can use the mind. The mind is part of the soul. And the spirit world is the great mind. The mind-to-mind the -mind communication, that's what happens with that. So yeah. it's mind-to-mind. -mind. So the subconscious is part of the soul. So I do believe that we're being influenced. We do the mediumship of the subconscious. Um, that's what I think happens with the spirit world. All right. So now, now so how does that differ? Now we, I, I mean, this is a great time. You have, you have a new deck. Yeah, great segue, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> you have a deck. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> this was not, I, I, I meant to talk about this, but it's not the reason I brought it up. Uh, <laughs> talking to Heaven, mediumship cards, right? You did them okay. with Doreen yeah. Virtue. Yeah. Ah, look at that. We got a double. Oh, my um, goodness. And let me just open up the deck here. They're really pretty amazing, if I do say so myself. And Doreen Virtue, who you know, whoever knows very well, is the angel lady. She's a good, good friend of mine for many, many years. And her and I have wanted to work together for a long, long time. And we thought, what would help people the most? And we were going through, both of us were going through a grief. Um, we both lost someone in our lives around the same time. It's very funny because things happened to her and then they happened to me or vice versa within two weeks. Wow. It's very, very interesting. And we thought, number one, there'd be a, a book we would write about grief, and, that, and that's called How to Heal a Grieving Heart, which I know you, you have that there, too. I have too. that here. I can show yep. it to you. Yep. Yep. yep, How to Heal a Grieving Heart. And that's really just our own very personal views about what we can do, tools we can use to help heal when we go through grief, because grief is a very, very hard um, emotion to go through, and not everybody grieves the same. So it's really a, a, a wonderful tool to use for that. And then many, many people have said to me, um, I myself would like to contact spirit. Is there a way of doing that? And I know that there is, the spirit's always around us. So it's allowing oneself to open up the higher mind and to connect with spirit. And that's why we created these cards, the Talking to Heaven cards. And these are mediumship cards. So these are very, very different than tarot cards. They're not the same, and they're not the same as angel cards. They're very, very different. These are message cards. And what it is is really, and I, I got this also from a lot of the British mediums who use do this type of techniques of tuning into spirit with the subconscious, of course, and knowing that the intelligence of the spirit world is really influencing you in your subconscious mind, right? So what we have is we have the cards, and people take them, and I have the instructions in the box, but they're really what they're doing is when they're holding the cards, they're really Im Im imbusing them with their energy. They're filling up every one of those cards, the energy, their own energy, and at the same time, they're sending out a thought to a loved one they want to contact. It could be just one person. Don't think of several people, and that's all it is, and just... It just let your higher self lead you, let your spirit self, your soul self, lead you to the cards. You're shuffling the cards. And the, I tell people then ask a question. Send a question out to the spirit world. And when you feel that you have correct to the, the right answer, you, what, when you're ready to receive, then you pick up whatever card you feel and you get your answer. And I, now I said that one by, uh, to my mother. And when I say this, did you, you know, did you, uh, when did you pass over, what, ha what happened? Yeah. And there's a card I got. I was met by so many people. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it works. It works. I do this on. I do this on stage. With people, I. I have did at home. I've had a lot of incredible reviews. I was Sean McLean the other day doing these, and she's very skeptical, extremely skeptical, and she was blown away, and I was blown away, and I mean, it just it works. It's another tool, another way 
to tune in with mediumship. Now, I think you could take a message card like that and you get the message and then you're kind of in that state of receptivity. Yeah. And if you stay there and you sustain that energetic level, you then can get more mediumship information, more evidence coming through and so forth. So it's a good way of practicing also. Yeah, it is. It is. Beautiful. I just opened this one. Ugh. Look at that. I, I actually... Wow. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Gorgeous. Just gorgeous. Uh, we were just talking uh, about They're that. beautiful to look at. Never mind to read. Uh, Melissa and I uh, were messing around yesterday, and um, I, I don't remember what cards we picked, but we each picked cards, and then, you know, her card, she was like... She was thinking it could have meant two different things to her, so I said, well, pick another card, pick another card, and I shuffled them. Shuffled them. Like, I was shuffling. She picks the exact same card. <laughs> it happens. It happens. Doesn't it? It really happens. It's a greater intelligence. It really is. I mean, there's a greater intelligence doing it. It's the same thing when I have, it works the same principle that you give people coupons in the, in the audience of, a, of 500 people, and you have a, a jar of coupons on your, this, in your on the stage, and you pick out the number, and you're not looking at the audience, and you're just reading the number, and you tune into that number, and you start bringing a spirit in based upon that 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 piece of coupon, and the person in the audience has a corresponding number, and you really connect with spirit and make your link based on that. Yeah. And that gets you in. And you don't have to do that. I mean, you could easily turn around and just do a link in. But it shows people that there's more to it than just anybody in the physical you're not looking at them they have no influence on it you're really being influenced by the higher intelligence and that's really what that proves that's what these cards prove yeah it's beautiful and i just i love uh, people having the ability to have tools that they can use and you can see i mean you were talking about mediums earlier and psychics but uh and you can recognize and i and certainly i've seen this in my work with them that you know you sh Especially at the beginning, if they're doing a medium demonstration at the beginning, they're sort of warming up. But with each person, it's it's the same. They start off, and you can you can say you know you can you know there's a connection, and then the more messages they get, give, you can see the connection gets stronger and stronger and stronger, and th which is yeah. why, I mean for me, I, I I mean I know a lot of people give half hour readings, but I always recommend to mediums give one hour readings. I mean, if you're that type of person that it just keeps getting better and better and better, and you think, like, because there's a lot of people who, if they're a beginner, we're talking about sort of beginners, it might take them a while before they actually get deep. If you've been doing it for 30 years, you, I'm sure you, bam, right there, and you show that in your demonstrations. But but even in your own demonstrations, it, it, I recognize, I feel like you just, you learn more and more and more about that spirit and from that spirit it, as each minute goes on, as each message. I, I warm up. I, I, as you know, I warm up the crowd. I have to get to a certain space where, as I'm speaking to the audience, I'm also a teacher, so I, I teach a little bit. I'll, I'll yeah. often talk about a good 10, 15 minutes beforehand because what I'm doing is many things. Number one, I'm taking away this, the fear that some people come in with. I'm also letting the spirit world work with the audience members to clear away in the auric fields any, any energies they bring in, which is not conducive for connections, right, communication. And I also really want to teach them about the foundation of spirituality, of spiritualism, of, of connection and communication with the other side. It also gives the spirit world a way to work with the energy in the room. Just because they're dead doesn't mean they know how to communicate. Yeah. There's some good communicators, there's some very bad communicators, just like on the earth. Yeah. So they have to learn what the proper process is. It's very much like a radio and they have to tune to a certain station, a certain frequency. There are some spirits that have to really concentrate, concentrate, concentrate in order to project that thought into the medium of the mind, to project a feeling, to project an image. It takes a lot of energy, and that's sure how to do that. But there are other spirits that are very good at that. Yep. And I think for me, the ones who have more emotion are always the best ones to come through because they have that, that energy of the emotion to bring them through. Mm. And I find there, and, and also you have to remember that the spirit has to match the makeup, the design of the medium themselves, the closer that they are to the medium's makeup. So, for instance, I have a very good sense of humor, as you know. And if I get a spirit coming through with a good sense of humor, I'm in. And, and it's a great message, great reading, great connection. And that's what I like. I love that. Yeah. But if someone who comes in who is a scientist, it might be a little harder for the medium because, for me, because I'm not, that's not my background. And yeah. remember, it can only work, the spirit can only work with the medium's uh, reference points. So, the best mediums in the world are really, of the world, well, this is interesting. The best medium in the world is really the medium that's had the most life experience. If yeah. they've traveled all over the world, they've uh, been to different cultures and so forth, mm. then spirit will have a lot of reference points to use when they come into communication. Yeah. 
So I'm, and, and if that's true for mediums, I'm sure that for us non-mediums, it's even more difficult for them to be able to, you know, try to communicate with us. But they try, do they not? Yeah, the, the, Bob, they try every day. They're trying this every day. Another t tool people could use is really dreams. So if they keep a dream journal next to their bed, mm -hmm. and at night before they go to sleep, they say, Spirit, please come through. Whatever message you have, come into my dream state. Yep. And in that way, it's much easier for people because they're not in that conscious, limitation, human form, trying to criticize the judgment, the left brain, they're not there. Yeah. So that's another way of them coming in. I, I, and I also just want to touch real briefly on, on the mediumship, I've noticed also. Mediums for insecurity or whatever it might be, there's some mediums that ask a lot of questions. Yep. And they shouldn't ask questions. No. They shouldn't ask questions. They should state facts, not questions. Yep. Um, so I see a lot of that. That's lazy mediumship to me. Yeah. Listen, I ask questions too. I do. I find myself doing that. But I try to not. I try to bring as many facts as I possibly can in order to establish the contact. And I think that kind of proves the mediumship. Um, but it, I, and it's it's also easier once you you're also respecting the spirit world because if you come through with they're trying to project who they are, that's really what you should be. And the medium has to be, you know, you got to be really secure within yourself because you're out there, you're vulnerable, and you got to be willing to be completely vulnerable and stripped of everything yeah. to let the spirit come through. Yeah. Uh, and you talked about inspired writing, and, and early in my career, I, I, I did a lot of inspired writing myself as practice. Now, I, I, I more communicated with my spirit guides and asking questions. What was interesting, uh, I felt like I had success with it. Uh, I, I had more success uh, when I was asking a question, and then I wrote down, I, you know, quickly wrote down whatever uh, came to my head. And, and then I would read it later. So I wasn't worried about misspellings or, you know, any of that grammar or anything. I just would ask a question, then I would write down, and I would ask another question. And, but it became a conversation. It, you know, it seemed to, I would start with that first question, it sort of became this conversation that went back and forth. Then I would read it later, and a lot of times I'd just walk away from it, and two days later I'd read it and go, wow, you know, I, I, I don't know where that came from. Um, I mean, obviously I do, but... But it didn't come from me, and and, and they were all, there seemed to be a different personality in the writing, and uh, and wisdom that I didn't feel like I had. So, well, not from your ego self, you know, not from the human self. You know, the ego, e g o, edging God out. We're all God, but when that ego gets in the way of the humanness of us, it blocks that God source. So it might be your higher self coming through, it might be a spirit guide coming through, that higher intelligence. But when we try to critique something and judge something, it shuts it down, doesn't it? Yeah. So we really have to be open to that. And if you get to that receptive state where you can just sit and just write as fast as you can, you don't think about it, you just write. Right. Like I said, two days later, you look at it, it's like, wow, where'd that come from? Yeah, another, and another, way, another tool, Bob, people can use to, to recognize their guides, um, and this is with Tony Stockwell, who I work with a lot, uh, to, uh, worked with me in this one, where you really get into a receptive state, but it's a meditative state, you're centering yourself, grounding yourself. And I always take it back to the heart space, that sense of love of self, and just stay right there, be aware of the atmosphere all around you, and then you send out a thought to the spirit world, may one of the guides come behind me, stand behind me, and you just tune into the energy that's behind you and sense the difference in how it feels, then you ask them to come close to you, place a hand upon your shoulder, and feel what that's like, and every step of the way you just feel how the energy shifts, and then once you're established that the guide has put the hand on your shoulder, give you a sign. What sign do you know when your spirit guide is around you? Is it a bit of cold, fresh air? Is it a tap on the head? Is it a thought about love? Is it a picture of a rose? Whatever it might be for you, yeah. that's the way to establish. That's a tool that one can use to establish their guide or work with their guides. Yeah, that is fun. That, I mean, that's, that's a, I, I'm going to try that myself, actually. Uh, I had a, uh, we, I was at a party, a family friend party once, and it was more of a test than anything else, but I, I, got everybody to sort of play this game with me, uh, which was to do inspired writing for this other person, you know? And of course, we all knew something about each other. Or not, I mean, there were some strangers in the, in the and, but everybody paired up with someone that they didn't know that much about. And I had them sort of do inspired writing, whatever they would get. It was a short, brief thing, message for the other person. Oh, wow. I mean, it was powerful. It was powerful what came through. Um, and these, and, and I focused, the intent was loved ones on the other side, not spirit guidance, but loved ones on the other side. I was blown away by what happened. Uh, I don't know, is there any danger to doing that sort of a, uh, exercise with people? 
I don't know about danger. I don't believe in evils. I don't believe that. But I, I think that you have to have somebody who's very well grounded and kind of understands the work in some respects. And, yeah. and so at other times, when they don't know nothing, it sometimes works really well too. As, as long as the intent is proper, the motivation yeah. is proper. And uh, I, I think that in done in the right conditions, it's, it's fine. Um, it's really interesting because when you get out of your way, the ego thinks it's a soul to soul communication. And things can really come through that way. And again, like everything, the more practice, one does yeah. and brings themselves to that space of receptivity and the more they honor that space and know that space, hmm. the more they're able to receive spirit. And and uh, definitely. And I think that was one of the things I think people walked away from this more open-minded about the possibilities and their possibilities in spirit communication. And when I said danger, I think, I think you know, what I, th I probably I was thinking of was, I guess the, if I was to call it a danger, um, it's not a good word, but uh, it would be, you know, someone misinterprets a message again, as I was talking about earlier, they misinterpret what they were getting, and then, and, and then they give some kind of a fearful message. I, I, fearful message, messages never come through. So I, I, that's always a red flag for me. If it's, a fear, if it's fear coming through, that's qu ego. question it. Yeah. Yeah, that's the ego coming through. When fear messages come through, the ego, it's, it's all what's made up in the mind. And, and I think that that's just the ego based when it's fear based. And with judgment, it's all judgment equals fear. So it's fear based there. I think we're perfect spirits, for perfect beings of love. Yeah. So the human, the human gets in the way every once in a while. We've got to be very careful. This, here we go again discernment. See? Yeah, discernment. Uh, all right. So the next uh, tool that I want to talk about, because certainly. I, I know what you want to talk about. So yeah, I, I bet you do. I bet you do. The spirit board. Uh, it's also called a planchette, I think, and we most people know it as the Ouija board. <laughs> uh, yes, no, German, yes. That's been around for years. It's another tool, a divination tool, as you said. Now, this again is um, uh, this is a good one because it's based upon for the psychic, first of all, to get in there, but it also is a spirit communication. So spirit is influencing you in the subconscious to come through and point out those letters. So in a way, it is spirit communication, definitely. I definitely believe that. I started with that, by the way. I One of the tools I started with, spirit communication, was, was the board. And um, you can tell the energy. You feel the energy shift when spirit comes in. You'll feel the very different spirits. Some have much more energy, some don't. Um, you'll just feel that it's a really interesting way to discern the different energies and what they feel like the personalities come through. I, I think that's a great way uh, of working. It's gotten such bad rap because of religion and, and uh, misinformation and ignorance. Um, if used properly, it's just another tool that is spirit communication. Again, I, I like that more than, again, it's just another way of spirit communication, not psychic, yeah. but spirit. And that, and that is a good way, you know, done properly in the right motivation. You're not going to do it when you're hanging out in a party, getting drinking or something. No, yeah. because it's disrespectful to you and the spirit world. But you can use it in properly, a proper way of doing it for sure. I... Uh uh, you know, for for anybody who has skepticism, of course, the spirit board is difficult for them because people are touching it. So they're always worried about someone manipulating it. And, of course, there is there is that uh, little story to go with that because and, and I think it explains how it works um, in, a, in a way is uh, I was I, w I was we were kind of playing around with some friends and, and one of them had lost her husband and and. Uh, we were asked, we were communicating with them, and we were getting messages and that, that sort of thing, and um, no, no, no evidence that it was something that none of us knew. So one of the last questions that were asked was, you know, do you have, do you have a message, do you have something you want to ask of any one of us, you know, do you want to? And um, immediately in my head, uh, be happy came popped into my head be happy so i i took my i i walked away like i stood back i took my fingers off of what is that thing called i don't even know i took planchet. my the, is that the planchet so i took my fingers off of it and uh because i didn't want to influence it because that was the message that i got and i'm no i'm no medium but uh and then sure enough uh, what the rest of them did was B E, you know, they ended up spelling out be happy, which was very cool. It was great for me to see that happen, and uh, and even for me to feel like I got a message. I was like, whoa. Well, it's interesting. Cause it's also interpreting it because uh, my husband Brian and I, we were doing the uh, Ouija board the first time this was years ago. He'd never done it before, and I, I had done it. And my friend Kelly was with us, and we were doing this. And Brian's grandmother came through, Mary, and I married the common name. I said, "Who's Mary?" He goes, "Well, that's my grandmother." I'd never given him a read before. And she spelled that your father has a good heart. This is a, this was 
the father's mother. So we said, oh, that's very nice. That's very sweet. Nice sentiment. Great. About a week later, the phone rings, and it's um, his mother who said, your father's in the hospital. So Brian went to the hospital. His father had cardiac arrest. So afterwards, um, he was fine. He stabilized. Everything was fine. And Brian's walking out of the room with the cardiologist, and the cardiologist looks at Brian and said, listen, we would have lost your father, but he has a good heart. So it was literal. Yeah. So it was literal. So you don't know how the spirit's going to get. Is it literal meaning or is it symbolic meaning? Yeah. So you have to be able to, again, discern between what's literal, what does that feel like, and what is symbolic, what does that feel like. And, and that's, where, that's where experience comes in. Um, experience, education from experienced people. All right, so similar, we got the, we've got the spirit board, uh, and, and I'm the next one I want to bring up because we people are touching the spirit board. Um, this the next one is sort of similar. We have, uh, we have the uh, pendulum. So you got something like this that is on a string oh, just, or a chain uh, or whatever. Um, you consciously just moved that. I saw that. <laughs> I did. Uh, talk about those. How does that work? Well, uh, then, uh, yeah, so that's subconscious, so they can affect things subconsciously. I, I, I'm so skeptical, but, you know, part of my human part, too, and doing this for so many years. But I, I do believe that's, again, another tool, a divination tool. I think it works more on the psychic level. So yes and no questions. Yeah. I do think that this, so the spirit part of ourselves, the subconscious, is, is helping to let that know yes or no. So I think that is what's happening. I, I just think another way of tuning in. Uh, and then you, you I know another have, one to talk you, about, which is really interesting. What? Another tool with Raymond Moody uh, used years ago. Oh, right? yeah. Yes. All right. So the uh, and I know he I, he called it, it. I don't even know if I'm saying it right. Psychomantium is that is that what you? Um, that's correct. Mm -hmm. And and so this, uh, from my understanding, is there's a mirror in a dark room, maybe a closet even, and you sit in front of the mirror with the doors closed, no light. Right. God knows how long. <laughs> and uh, eventually, what? What's supposed to happen? Well, it, and he wrote a book about it, and it was, it was, this goes back to Egyptian times. He used to do it. It's called scrying, and scrying is where you can see images that will appear in, in, if you will, clairvoyance or subconscious, showing these images, um, and it'll appear in the mirror. On that mirror, there'll be a, a, you'll see a scrying. Now, is it being projected into your clairvoyance? I think so. So it's being projected into your subconscious, and you're seeing it that way. That's that's a way of seeing it. Yes, they're projecting on you. So it's called scrying, and you could do it through a psychomantium, which is a mirror, and you sit there and you can see the spirit. You could also do this with a candle. So if you concentrate and look at the flame of a candle for a while, you'll begin to get images as well. They're projecting upon your subconscious, your clairvoyance. Now another way of doing physical mediumship, which to me it's it's also showing you as you're sitting there. It's a little bit different than what you're talking about, but if you sit in front of a mirror with a red light. And in trance called transfiguration, where the spirit can actually transfix themselves upon your face, and you will begin to see the, the face molding and changing around, mm -hmm. and you'll begin to see the spirit face projected upon your face as you're sitting in front of the mirror, and you think your eyes are doing optical illusions, but you will all see it. If you're three or four people sitting, you will all see how the spirit is changing the face through transfiguration, and you actually see the characteristics of that face of the spirit. Uh, um, superimposed upon the, the other person's face. You do not have to be a medium. Uh, if you're a medium, great. Better energy you can, they can use, but it can happen to anybody. Anybody can do that uh, transfiguration. I do this in my classes. I do a transfiguration with a person. You know how the students look at each other and see who comes through. Mm. The fun thing is then you get the spirit coming through on the, on the, on the uh, partner's face, and then this, the person can ask them, give me three or four pieces of evidence that I can give Please give me, and you can do it in your mind, so you're not even saying anything. But as you see that spirit face on the person in front of you, spirit can be three or four pieces of evidence that I am able to relate to this person that will know it to you. Yeah. So, I, I mean, in many of these things, it's fun. Uh, I say fun, but I, uh, it might it be is, more helpful when you do something with a partner, especially if you don't know that much about the person. This is why these, these events, you know, are great because you can find two complete strangers. Uh, but if anybody has an opportunity to go to an event, you know, I, I've been to one. I'm teaching October. I'm teaching a class for a week at Omega Institute in Rhinebeck, New York. So I'm teaching all all these techniques and exercises that people. And you are, and you, so people don't have to have. They don't have to be a psychic or medium to to be able to uh, attend. No, they just have to be a soul. <laughs> okay. 
well, everybody's a soul. So there's certain levels, of course, of expertise or sensitivity, but everybody can definitely have an experience or experiences at the beginning, of course. Oh, that's great. I love it. Because uh, I went to one early, early on in my uh, career uh, at, at a um, spiritualist church. Yeah. It was Rita Berker, which is at that time. And I, I think the, the guest, they, they always had a lot of guests from England. Guest was Gordon Smith. Very early on his great, career, great medium, great yep. medium, and and he was doing this, and you know we did the thing where uh, we held we held an object from some strangers, you know their watch or their ring or whatever we held, and we would tell them something that was more psychic work. Psychometry, then, yeah. Then we did mediumship with people. I didn't, I I was not good at it, but the person that I had uh, was really good at it. And one of the things I will say that was really cool about that was, so Melissa was there too. She had a, her own partner over here. Mm -hmm. And when we did the mediumship, uh, this guy, his name is Craig, was getting, my father was coming through. And my father was coming through uh, with messages of sort of remorse and guilt about things, you know, the way, uh, whatever. Uh, Things he could have, he thought he could have done better, right? Sure. And I was like, oh, you know, Dad, I, you know, whatever, I forgive you. Let's get over it. And, and, but Melissa was getting uh, her reading with her partner, and my father was coming through to her as well, and he was coming through happy and joyful, and and telling her how much he loved her and she how she was like a daughter to him. So it's very interesting that that taught me so much about. Uh, people in spirit and that when depending on the person that they're communicating with might sh it's going to they're going to show themselves differently depending on the message that they're trying to get through and the references of that medium so if there's a, a medium who's much more in a happy space and you know and, and emotionally and happy and connected that that spirit will use that aspects of that medium or if there's another medium who's um a little bit more um a critique and needs a little more ju the judgment or something where well, they know they can get into that medium that way to express their sorry their please forgive me then they'll try that as well mm. so and it's important people realize Bob that it, you know we live in a three-dimensional human world yeah. where, where souls having this human experience and a soul can be in several places at once it's almost like water can be in several places at once yeah. it's not linear in the spirit world so the soul can give you a thought that person a thought and that person a thought all at the same time so it's a different aspect of our being a harder one to understand because we're so locked into this three-dimensional world I often say to people just think of the Sun the Sun is this wonderful light but yet it has rays of it and can touch all different parts of the world at all different times at once, mm. so it's it's kind of like that. So yeah, mm -hmm. different aspects of the medium are being used or um, in, um, charged, lit up. I, I like to say lit up, yeah. and no no greater work can be done, I think, than bringing love um, back to the earth to someone who didn't receive it or the spirit needs to say something that was left unsaid. Any any time that a meeting will bring through a resolution uh, for unfinished business, uh, yeah. I think it's really that's what it's all about the healing. Yeah, it's, you're right. And um, going back to that message you gave us earlier that you talk, that, that Mavis talked about, you know, my father wanted to get that message through to me, he wanted to get another message through uh, to Melissa, and you know, just so much, so much going on there. It's, it's these kind. I mean, just, and people also, should go to that Omega event because I think the they, Omega event. Yeah, they should. But, but also think, Bob, is that all of the uh, rippling effect. Of your father coming through and talking about how he's sorry, please forgive him. That's only that's only going to affect your forgiveness of your dad and your relationship, but him as well. And every other person who you talk to, every other person who you sending out a broadcast to, yeah. and you share that story, they're going to receive that message as well. Yeah. That's well, I mean, what was interesting when I say get over it, I felt like I had forgiven him years prior. You know what I mean? So. To yeah. me, I wasn't really sure why that message was coming through again. Like you said, it might have had more to do with the guy who was delivering the message. That's true. True. It might have been he had a relationship with his father, which you know he hasn't forgiven. So that might that's also another aspect of it that might have happened too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All sure. right. So I, I, now one, we, we don't really. It, you could say meditation is the is the tool, but I don't even know that you need to use meditation. I, so this same friend who had lost her husband, that we were using the Ouija board. Uh, he, she. Right after her husband had died, uh, she was just walking along the road, just taking a walk, and she was having a conversation in her mind with her husband, who was in spirit. And But she was hearing her own voice in her head, you know what I mean? 
So it was difficult for her. She wasn't really hearing his voice. She was hearing her own voice. And she's like, you know, give me something to prove to me that I'm really communicating with you. Tell me something that I don't know that I can confirm. And he said, uh, your mother wants to buy a new blue dress. Okay. Very good. So that was... So anyway, next time she saw her mother, she asked her mother, Mom, are you thinking about buying a dress, you know? And she says, oh, yes, there's this blue dress in this store, and I keep going back to it, but I can't get myself to spend the money. And that, that was perfect for her. So but the message here that I'm trying to uh, teach is that it not, it's not necessarily going to be a loved one's voice that we hear in our head. It might be our own voice. It's also very subtle. So it comes in very, very subtle. Okay, very subtle. And it might be, yes, it comes in this form of your voice, for sure. Um, when I receive messages, um, and it's clairsentience, clairsentience is clairfeeling, and clairaudience is clairhearing, and I will hear messages with my own voice many times. Mm. So that's how they have to use that. They use the tool that way. They use that, the vessel that way. Um, Sometimes it'll be you're hearing your voice. It'll be a thought. Um, it's spirit projecting a thought to your, to your mind, mind-to-mind -mind communication, soul-to-soul -soul communication. And uh, once you get that feeling of, let's say, okay, mother has to buy a blue dress, what does that feel like when you get that message? That's mediumship. And if you can bring yourself back to that level of receptivity of what that feels like and use that over and over again, practice, 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 to get to that same feeling, that same level, that's the beginnings of mediumship. All right. I love it. Uh, we're kind of running out of time here, so there's a couple things I want to do. I want to remind people about <laughs> your Talking to Heaven mediumship cards. I, yes. I do, yes. and I'll have a link below here that you know people can, and you pick the cards, and, and then if you want more explanation, there's a little book that comes with it, okay? Yes. Uh, I've got all these cards. We've got every single message on there, and all the explanations have been there. And, and I also want to talk about, uh, very quickly, I just want to say, How to Heal a Grieving Heart. This is the latest book that you've done, you did with uh, Doreen Virtue. All right. Same thing. It's like the cards. Absolutely gorgeous graphics. You know, just beautiful. And, and they're the kind of messages that you can just, you know, you can do one a day. You can pick, you know, it's one of those oh, things. Any page, oh, any page. And, again, your higher self will bring you to the page that you need. That you need. Uh, yeah. I, and I, so I love that. Um, and I have a new TV about, show, Bob. Huh? I have a new TV show. Well, that's what, uh, that was my next thing. So I'm psychic. I knew you were going to ask me that. Yeah, I, that's weird. Uh, <laughs> Gaim TV. So talk about that. Talk about your new Gaim TV show. Sure. Uh, it's called Spirit Talk. And um, they approached me and they said, we would like to do this show with you. And it's a show where people subscribe once a month. It's like nine ninety five. And you get it on your computer or on a television. It's like a Netflix or Roku, and you, you, know, you have to bring it, you have to stream it, live stream. Yeah. And I go to, uh, we, we film in Boulder, Colorado, in a live audience. And if any of you wants to go to the live audience, be part of it, you're welcome to. Um, you can go on my website and find out. Um, and I, what I do is, I do two days of shooting. So I do two shows a day. And I come out and I teach. I teach a little philosophy there. I talk about philosophy. And then I'll do an exercise. I might have a theme for the day, but maybe reincarnation or healing or energy, whatever it might be for that day. However, spirit gives me it, by the way. I don't know what I'm going to talk about. Before I, I swear to you, it's one of the most, as something that happens to me with this show. You know, I'm standing there, I'm like, okay, what am I going to talk about today? And you can only practice, you know, you only know so much. Yeah. And I, I tell you, when I come to that curtain in there, they, they just they give me it. So it's really influenced by spirit. And then I give readings, of course, messages in the spirit world, and again, I tie it up at the end with a philosophy. So it's on um, every Thursday, yep. and a new episode. We've done eight episodes already. Wow. Uh, some incredible messages from spirits. So it's on Gaim TV. And this is web. professionally filmed. I mean, this is beautifully... It's phenomenal. It's, oh. it's beautiful. And the set is gorgeous. It's like Star Trek. And, and it's really done from love, because there's not much of a budget, and the people don't have much of a budget. But I've got to tell you... I actually met with the president of Gaim, and I said, listen, you have so much content, and not only from me, but from years of programming that they've done documentaries, they've done original programming, they've, they've actually bought some programming, spiritual, it's all spiritual, high-minded consciousness programming. Yeah. And I said to the president, I said, you need to get this to the mainstream, you need to bring it out to the mainstream, is there some way you can get this to a network or so forth? So I'm actually working right now with trying to get this to a network and get it to a broader audience, because yeah ready for it people are ready for oh, this people work. are ready for it and and for whatever the 9.95 a month or whatever are so worth it there's just so much there you could you could give up your tv and just be filled with positive loving messages every single day and remember what you put out there what you what you align yourself with whether it's like positive messages positive television music 
positive energy. That's what you're going to get back. Yeah. You know, that's, that's where tuning into that level. And it's very, very true. I find myself, I want to be around positive things, mm. whether it's beautiful garden, beautiful people. You know, I, I, I like that in my life. Life's too short. And I'll have links to that below the video. I'll uh, links to your website where people can find out about all the events you're doing. You're selling out all over the country. Um, it was, it's, you know, whatever. I've been to, I've been to a few of at least uh, of yours now. I, I always have a blast. No matter how many times I see it, it's always different because the readings that come through are different. Uh, oh, and I know, you know, what you teach, you teach based on whatever you're feeling. You should teach that night. I love that. Uh, some of the best speakers I've ever met, that's what they do. They don't plan it, they go on, and they whatever they're supposed to teach, they teach. Uh, and you could do that when you're experienced like that. Uh, anything else that you wanted to say or mention? Uh, no, I think that's really it. I think that people are concerned about the, the, the consciousness of the planet, what's going on on the planet this time. And I always say life is a series of choices, either love or fear. And like we're just talking about, attune yourself to the positive, to love, because every single person matters. Every person has a, is an intricate part into the tapestry of, of, of the world here. Yeah. So what, what you think you become. So I just tell people to keep it positive, you know, yeah. and, and things will play out as they're meant to play out. But certainly you can help things with love and positivity. I love it. I, I know my audience resonates with that, and they will love. That's a great way to end. So, uh, James, thank you so much. Thank you, Bob. As always, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, all right. So we'll have, on, have you on again. I, I, I love to have you on every so often, and we'll just keep up the conversation going, right? Perfect. That sounds all right. good. Uh, you all have right. my love, buddy. Love, too. Bye-bye. Bye, Bob. Thanks.